What a pot this is. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. What? Oh, what a match. What about devastation? I've never seen anything like that. We'll be talking about this dramatic hand for the next 50 years. Poker comes home as the World Poker Tour takes the great American card game back to its roots on the shores of the Mississippi. The World Poker Tour is a series of international tournaments featuring high-stakes games, world-class players, and the biggest prize pools on the planet. Tonight, it's sink or swim on the mighty Mississippi as the World Poker Tour docks in Tunica for the Jack Binion World Poker Open. A record 367 poker buffs came ashore, dropping $10,000 of their own money for a shot at becoming poker's newest millionaire. Yes. This is my bad. Three days, 361 casualties later, the battle has just begun. As these six survivors clash for the million dollar title and a coveted $25,000 seat in the WPT Championship, a season ending shootout worth millions. Six players, three and a half million dollars, but on the shores of the Mississippi, only one champion on the World Poker Tour. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. This week we are in Mississippi, the birthplace of poker. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. And Mike, it is a real pleasure for us on the World Poker Tour to be coming home with the great American card game, poker, to the land where it all began, the mighty Mississippi, home of the riverboat gambler. Well, that's right, Vince. And the game's gotten so big that here in Mississippi, it takes not one, but two casinos in Tunica to host this great event. The Horseshoe Casino and the Gold Strike Resort Casino. That is right, and what a tournament it has been so far. Another record breaker, 367 players entered this event. They all put up $10,000. Now they're down to six, and they're going to be going after a total prize pool of close to $3.5 million. And we are down to our final six players, one of whom is going to walk away with a whopping $1.3 million first prize. Vince, not too bad for a four-day work week. That is slightly more than what we're making. It's very exciting. But to top it off, he'll also get that guaranteed $25,000 buy-in at our championship at the end of the season at Bellagio. Let's go to the felt and meet the player. All right. Starting out on the short stack today in seat six is Tony Hartman. Tony's a professional gambler. He's 36 years old from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He'll be starting out with 111,000 in chips. Okay, in seat number four from Los Angeles, California, Can Kim Wa. This is his second time at a final table on the World Poker Tour. He's got 279,000. <laughs> Starting out in fourth chip position today is Barry Greenstein. Barry is 49 years old. He donates 100% of his winnings to charity. Barry will be starting out today with 575,000 in chips. Good luck, all Seat you. number three, a legend in the house, Chip Reese. He is the youngest inductee ever to the Poker Hall of Fame out of Las Vegas. Chip's with us today. He has 780,000. And Vince, he is probably the most respected player in the poker world by his peers. Starting out in the number two chip position today is James Tippin. Now, James is a 67-year-old retired businessman from Toledo, Ohio. And Vince, he is Cinderella at the ball here today. But with 842,000 in chips, he has a good shot to put on the glass slipper. You're right about that. Now, our tournament leader at this point in seat number five, Mr. Randy Jensen. He's from Fort Collins, Colorado, 33 years old. And this man has 1,085,000 worth of chips. All right, folks, here we go. Dealer, shuffle up the deal. Good luck to all of you. Here we are at the Jack Binion World Poker Open, and this event is the largest prize pool in the history of the World Poker Tour. Close to $3.5 million. The winner will make over $1.2 million, Mike. Incredible. Well, we're starting out today with the players' ante $2,000 each, and the two blinds are six and 12000 We are going to play No Limit Texas Hold'em. Two cards in your hand, five in the middle. Let's watch the start. The action's going to be on Randy Jensen, our chip leader. He's from Colorado. He's got 7-4. He's not going to play. Now we're up to Tony Hartman here. Look at this fence. He's picked up two sixes. Oh, the big house has a wired pair right off the bat. The former pizza delivery man, short stacked here. Yeah, I'm moving all in. He's going to push it all in, Mike. 
Tony moves all in. The big house has put his chips in the center of the pot here. And now it's on James Tippin going out. Rings don't fold. Chip Reese going away. Now it's on to Ken Kim Wa, who's got King Eight. Can folds. Gonna win the first pot. So there it is, a little love me tender for the big house right there. Heck of a poker player and an Elvis lover. Yes, he is, as you can tell by the sideburns and the look. It's always good to get one under your belt right there. Nice start for him. Now it's going to be on Barry Greenstein. Barry looks down at the three deuce offsuit and folds. Barry folds. Now here's Chip Reese. Look at this. He's Chip raising 40,000 with a Jack Nine offsuit. Ken Kim fold. going out. Randy quickly folds. Randy. Around to the big house once again. He's got nine, eight, a suited connector this time. Yes, he does. His problem is he's only got about 125,000 in chips. Chip Reese bet him 40,000. So it's about a third of his stack. And as bad as he wanted to play it, he opts to fold there. James Tippin's got a wired pair of tens. I call. But he's just going to call it. Kind of surprised at that. So this is the Battle of the Buckeyes. Chip originally from Dayton, Ohio. James Tippin from Toledo, Ohio. We're flopping. Flop comes King 10 9. Tremendous for Mr. Car Wash, man. He's hit three of a kind. He checks it. Chip checks right behind him. Chip has the straight draw along with the bottom pair and checked. Here's the turn card. Fourth card, the eight of spades. Now the eight of spades comes off. James is not going to hesitate this time. 50,000. James bets 50,000. Well, he bets 50,000. Notice Chip's hand here. He's got a pair of nines. He has a straight draw. Remember, his opponent checked on the flop and now all of a sudden bet on the turn. We know James Tippin has three of a kind at this point. We get to see the cards. We have the WPT cam, of course. Really a big hand here. Chip's faced with a tough decision. Little does he know he's up against three tens. Chip's but not going to fall for it, Mike. He did not fall for it. Good hand. Spencer's a saying in poker that good players can set traps, but great players can sense them. Nice play right there by Chip Reese to let go of that hand. My name's Chip Reese. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. I play every day in the biggest game in the world. You know, on any given day, somebody can win or lose a million dollars. I came and played in this tournament because my kids wanted me to come play in it. There's great kids too, Vince. Son, Casey, daughter, Taylor. Casey, quite a little ball player. Right back on Chip Reese. He's got a solid hand again. Ace, eight of clubs. And he just calls, calls in first well position. Back. Right behind him, Ken Kim Wan. He's picked up a pair of eights, Mike. Right. He's going to raise it, so he comes over the top of Chip Reese here. Comes in for 65000 Randy throwing Randy away Cole. an A7. Big House looks at a 9-6 offsuit. Uh, he's not going to call. Out. And he's around to James Tipp and Car Wash. And look at this. He's got a pair of jacks. Wow. Two big hands in a row for him. Now, how is he going to play these? Lots of wired pairs so far in this event. Well, there's a rule in poker. Beware of the limper. Chip Reese limped in in first position, and another man raised him. So you need a pretty good hand to play in this spot. He has one and two jacks. Let's see how he plays them. Well, he looks very excited. He's trying to contain that excitement. Now, how strong do you play it? Well, do you call? Do you raise? What do you want to do here? 65,000 is a bet. Yes, sir. Bet yes, it is, James. Total. Call. He calls. He just calls. Very interesting. Now up to Barry Greenstein in the big blind. He's picked up a monster hand, too. Ace, king of hearts. Oh, he's got big slick. He's grabbing his $100,000 stacks, Vince. Barry is raising it to 300000 And he's going to go big. He's bet at 300000 Oh, yeah, and Chip Reese quickly goes out. He's too rich for my blood. And now it's on Can Kim. Well, what Can is wondering is, is Barry Greenstein trying to put a move on both of them and pick up this pot? Does he want to play with the two eights? You're talking six-handed. It's tough to get these type of hands all the time. Well, if he plays, he's going to be all in. This is a man that's been at the World Poker Tour final table. This is his second time. He's only got about 250000 in chips. Now he's got less than 200000 after that first bet. And he opts to fold. He's got to let and it go. 
Now we're back to James Tippin, and what a decision he's faced with here, Vince. Now, two jacks are normally a good hand, but you have to put Barry on a hand here, I think, if you're sitting in the seat the way this hand was played. That's a pretty big bet, Barry. Pretty big bet, sir. i tell you something. He would love to give the old hot carnauba wax to Barry right now. James looking at two jacks. going to cost him about another 235000 to call. Wow, what a decision he's faced with here. 235,000. I'm going to call. He's going to call it. He does the right thing here. Wow, what a pot we have now, folks. Nearly 700,000 in the pot already. We haven't got to the flop yet. A massive pot. So Barry Greenstein's literally got half his stack in the pot already. Now, James has more chips than he does, so whatever happens, even if he loses this pot, he's not going to be eliminated. <coughs> a lot of players would go all in at this point, just gambling all the chips, but he's content to call this. Well, here comes our flop. It's two jacks versus ace-king of hearts for Barry. 700,000 in there. Flop Bingo for Barry. It comes king, 10-3. Now the action is on James. Just an awful flop there for James Tippin. Just been outdrawn on the flop. Well, but he doesn't know it. No, he doesn't. His opponent might have ace-queen. His but opponent might have two nines. His opponent might be bluffing. James checks. Well, he checks. How about the rest? And here comes Barry. He's going all in here for the rest of his money. Right back Barry to work. Barry in. does it. Nearly 300,000, Barry bets. And again, James is faced with a tough decision. Oh, he has just put James's like head in a vice right now, and he's squeezing. Well, you see him shaking his head. Now, he was afraid that his opponent might have had aces, kings, or queens before. Now, to add to the mix, if his opponent had two tens, he would be beat. If his opponent had ace, king, he would be beat. If his opponent had king, queen, he would be beat. So there's a lot of hands out there that can beat him because of this flop. 295,000. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you count it? You see Barry's girlfriend and his son out there sweating this hand. He is all in. If he loses this pot, he is out of here. And he's already told us anything he wins is going to give to charity. A beautiful gesture. He gives all his money on the World Poker Tour away to charity events. That is some story. But in the meantime, the story is on James Tippin here. This is a pressure cooker for this man. You know, there's nearly a million dollars in this pot. Yes, it cost him 300000 to call, but... You're getting a good price on your money here, but little does he know. He is up against it. If he calls this, he's going to have to get very lucky to outdraw Barry in this pot. He's not going to play it. Barry's going to win this pot. He's going to throw it away. You're right, Vance. He lays it down. It turns out it is a good lay down on his part. Good hand, Barry. A very generous man. The philanthropist at the table. Hitting his kings on the flop. Taking a huge pot. <laughs> Folks, you're watching one of the greatest poker players in the world in Barry Greenstein. This is going to be fun today, Vince. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from Mississippi on the World Poker Tour. boardroom table and the poker table. The only difference between them is a layer of felt. At these tables we go all in. We're fully leveraged. Reading risk and reward here isn't much different than reading it on a spreadsheet. We play because poker is like business without the conference calls. The office may close at six, but there's a game that's always open. We play at fulltillpoker.com. the Jack Binion World Poker Open right here in Tunica, Mississippi. Welcome back. Now, the great American card game did have its roots right here on the Mississippi. However, on the World Poker Tour, there is only one game that we choose to play. Well, that's right, Vince. And tonight, we have a real riverboat captain that's going to tell us more about the game that's known as the Cadillac of Poker. 
name of the game is No Limit Hold'em. It takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards are placed face up in the center of the table. Each player combines his two down cards with the community cards to make his best five card poker hand. That is right, and betting is what this game is really all about. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. And the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. In poker, this is called the flop. You bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card, or the turn card, on the table. Another round of betting follows. Then the last card, called the river card, is turned up on the table. There's a final round of betting. You turn up your cards. You see who wins. Now we have two different styles of players at the table. We have three what I call very aggressive players, attackers, and Barry Chip and Randy Jensen, and the other three guys I think will be waiting for hands more. You're right. Lots of styles. James tipping, throwing away Jack Four. Barry lays this hand down. Fold, Barry folds. Look and at this. Chipper, he's taking a stab here. Five deuce, trying to steal this pot. Bet's 40,000, but he's going to have problems. Can sitting behind him has picked up Ace King. Oh, he's got the big slick this time. Is he going to push around the legend, Chip Reese? Well, the last time Chip limped in, Can raised him, came over the top of him. Here, Chip's raised. Hey, Ray. He and does Can it. is going to re-raise him. 130,000 Can bets. Randy with a 7-6 going out. <coughs> Tony Hartman with a little 43 junk hand. He's going out. Back to Chip. I'm going to take a stand against you pretty soon. He's going to win this pot. And he's not going to play it. <laughs> well, Chip, you're going to have to come in with better hands than that if you're going to look him up, my man. Great poker player, Ken Kimwa, made his first final table on the World Poker Tour last year at the Legends of Poker at the Bicycle Club, finishing fifth. And then so far, the Hall of Famer, Chip Reese, he's tried to raise and steal a few pots and pick up some pots. His opponents are coming over the top of him, so things not working for Chip so far today. <laughs> Timing might be off, but right now the big house is picking up a big hand. He's got ace, queen of clubs. Just the kind of hand you're looking for when you're on the short stack. And he's going to put it all he's in the go pot. He's going to go all in. As most players would do in this spot. Why not? Form a pizza delivery man. Pushing it in. James Tippin going out. Barry going out. Chip folds, and now around a can. Uh, Can's got a good hand. He's got queen, ten of diamonds. Solid hand. But he opts to fold. No chance. And Randy folds as well. So Elvis is going to pick up the pot here. Oh, yes. He is going to serve up the pepperoni. Gets a nice ovation from the crowd. Thank you. Thank you very much. He does his Elvis impersonation there, Vince. Not bad at all. So Tony Hartman, a big favorite here. Very personable guy. A lot of charm. Takes that pot. Tony Hartman, come from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm a professional gambler. I have a little dog named Elvis. I was going to name my first son Elvis, uh, but I don't think uh, my wife would have went for that, so I decided to name my dog that. Randy has the button. Well, he's a favorite James with the crowd, button. Vince, but the favorite to win this tournament are chip leaders Barry Greenstein and Randy Jensen. Both have nearly a million dollars worth of chips. James Tippin and Chip both have about 650000 Can with 300000 and Tony with about 125000 Decision right now on Barry. He throws away King Deuce. Barry falls, Chip looks at a 9-4 and folds. Can Kim Wall with a 7-6. Not going to call. Now here comes Randy 20, Jensen. 30000 20000 in the dark. Now Vince, he's announced he's betting in the dark. i got to play one pot. That means he hasn't looked at his cards, yet he's raising the pot. Splashing around here, Mike. Says he hasn't peaked. Whole camera doesn't know what I got. I don't either. Into Tony Hartman, who's got an ace jack here, Mike. <laughs> Tony's faced with a big decision right here. Ace jack's a pretty solid hand. What do you do? It's a big decision because it's all of his money. And if he calls and loses, he's out. Well, honestly, Vince, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to get away from this hand. Just a matter if he's going to call it or raise it. Remember, these guys have been playing together for days. He knows Ramsey's a very fast action player, a talker. You heard him talking there. I haven't looked. I'm raising in the dark. Well, that's a part of it. You know, you're wondering, wait a second. I mean, is the guy on the up and up here? 
121. He's going for it, Vance. Yes, he is. He has done it. He set all in over 120,000. Well, Randy Jensen is going to try to step on his Elvis impersonator's his blue suede shoes right now. James tipping going out. It's right back to Randy. Let's see. Peaky peaky time. I wow. I call. He has no, ace queen. He actually has a very big hand. He calls it. Poor Tony doesn't like this. It's the best part of my game, man. He knows he's up against it here. It's ace queen for Randy, ace jack for Tony. Tony shakes his head. He knows he's in trouble, Vince. Well, big house is going to be a big dog in this, but anything can happen. Let's see a flop. It's the best part of my game. Well, there it is, ace, king, king. And what this means is Tony's going to have to catch two runners to win this pot. He has to catch jack, jack, or queen, ten. He can tie if an ace or king comes up on the board. They both got aces with the kings, but the queen kicker in front, fourth street. Here it is. It's a ten. Now that means that Tony can win this pot if a queen comes up. He'll tie it if an ace or a king comes up. Otherwise, he's out of here in sixth place. River card coming up right now, Mike. Here we go. It's an eight. That's going to do it for our Elvis impersonator here, Vince. Oh, that is brutal. Well, he does take home 120000 for his efforts, Vince. At least that's enough money for a little Viva Las Vegas anyway. Uh, you know, and he has great style. The crowd loved him. Well, Vince, as they say, Elvis has left the building. But there's more exciting action coming to you from Tunica, Mississippi. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Tour in Mississippi at the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Elvis fan Tony Hartman just checked into Heartbreak Hotel after an all-in duel with Dream Crusher Randy Jensen. With five players remaining, who will stay afloat in this showdown on the Big Muddy? We started with 367. We have five now. Hey, action's going to be on can. He's got a terrible little hand, a 6-3. Not Can't interested. No, Randy looks down at Jack Tennis Spade. Remember, he won the last pot. Randy, it's a Randy nice little suited connector, and he goes up. In for 40000 Now, right behind him, James Tippin has two twos, 22. He's he not going to play it. Very quickly folds. And look at this. We're around a chip who's picked up ace, ten of clubs. Now, he's out of position. He opts to just call here with the ace, ten of clubs. Let's see a flop. Well, flop is queen, eight, four, with two hearts. The flop comes four hearts. And look at this. They're both going to check, and Randy has an inside straight draw with that. Now the board pairs fours. Chip checks again. Check. Randy checks again quickly right behind him. Both playing this very slowly. Now the six of clubs comes off. Chip checks again. Fifty. Randy's going to make a play at this pot. He bets 50,000. He's going to try to use that momentum. Well, if you're sitting there in chip seat, you're wondering, why didn't the guy bet on the flop? The board paired on the turn. Why didn't he bet then? you got to be thinking your ace might be good here if you're Chip Reese. Well, that's the disadvantage of being in the first position. you got to act first, Chip, this time, having to board act first throughout fours. this. Board reads two fours, a six, an eight, and a queen. Don't bring him in. My God. <laughs> I said, don't embarrass me today. Randy, very chatty over there. And it paid off for him. He gets Chip to lay down ace 10. Wow. Chip lays that hand down, gives the pot up. The tournament leader, Randy Jensen, taking control here. I'm Randy Jensen. I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm a real estate investor, poker player. I can play with anyone in the world, period. I have that confidence. I think I'm one of the 10 best players in the world. Just. My results don't show it. <laughs> well, Vince, you've got to give Randy credit for the way he played that pot. He bet at the river. He earned his pot, as we said, by betting with the worst hand and picking up the pot against Chip Reese. And the tournament chip leader extends his lead. Action's going to be on James Tippin, the lone amateur at the table. Well, amateur or not, this time he's got a strong hand. He's got queen, jack of hearts. A million two. He's got to like this starting hand. He was in the car wash business 
for 45 years, Vince. Hey, Kim, Must be nice to play poker after that. I call. He decides to call here. Barry going out with a 10 deuce off suit. Chip with two sixes on the button. He also calls. He just calls with a wired pair. Now, right. Can with a 5 4 suited connector in the small blind also calls. And now Randy, the chip leader, picks up a nice hand. King, Jack of Diamonds in the big blind, but opts to check. Everyone's playing conservative here. So here we go. Four way action out of five players at the table. We're flopping. Flop is ace, Jack, three. Now can flop the wheel draw, a straight draw, and he checks. Randy quickly bets 20,000. Well, he likes his position. His second card, the kicker, being better than Mr. Tippins. 50,000. James is going to raise it to 50,000 here, Vince. No respect for the ace on the board. What a bold play here by our amateur. Chip going out with the sixes. Can folds his hand. Now Randy faced with a tough decision. He's been raised. Well, he calls 30,000 more. Well, he likes his position. His second card, the kicker, being better than Mr. Tippins. Now the board pairs threes. Now what this means is, Vince, they both have the same hand right now. Jackson threes with an ace kicker. 60,000. But look at this. James bets again. 60 more thousand. Oh, and the car wash man putting the armor all to Randy Jensen makes him go out. He claps for himself, and you got to clap for him there yourself, Vince. Old aggressive action won him that pot. Well, my name is James Tiffin. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I'm ecstatic. I mean, this is every poker player's dream to make it to the final table. It's way beyond my expectations, but I've done it, and I'm here. What a nice play by the car wash man. Waxing it up. He waxed the chip leader there, Vince. The one so-called amateur at the table playing quite nicely. So back to play. Superstar player Chip Reese. This time he's got a big hand. He's got king, queen of spades, and he's going to raise. Comes in for 40,000. Right next to him, Ken Kim Wall with king jack. Ken now on the short stack. He folds his hand. Randy folds. Back to James Tippin. But James has got a pretty solid hand. Ace, ten of spades. Yes, he does, but Chip is raised in front of him, remember. How is he going to play this? 80, He's going to re-raise Chip Reese, raise it up to 80,000 with ace-10, folks. No intimidation. Very quickly folds. And Chip, Chip calls 40 more thousand. We're going to have a flop. Now it's ace-10 for James and king-queen for Chip. Here's a flop. Nine six five. No help to either player. I look at James Tippin. Preparing to bet, it looks like. 60. Yes, he does. 60,000. He's taking the bull by the horns. He bets 60000 and Chip lays down the hand. Excellent play by James Tippin. What bold, aggressive play. I'm telling you, you've got to be impressed with this guy here so far today. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back from the Jack Binion World Poker Open on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. One down, four to go. Bodies being dragged in the Mississippi. We are at the Jack Binion World Poker Open. What a start at this final table. It's been an amazing event so far. Four days of constant struggle. The best poker players in the world all gathering. Blinds are still six and $12,000. Well, action is going to be on Chip Reese. So far, nothing gone right for him yet today. He folds a six-deuce. Can't Kim while looking at it. Trashy 6-5 offsuit going out. Randy Jensen on the button, picks up an 8-3 of spade. Not a very impressive starting hand, but like you said, he's on the button. Oh. Randy calls. And he just calls on the button. And he's going to play around here. James calls James 6,000 more. 6, more with a jack-6 offsuit here. And Barry says, okay, give us a flop. He has a king-7 offsuit. 
And look at this. Flop comes up king, eight, seven. Barry's hit two pair on the flop. Now James checks. And Barry's going to bet his two pair. He bets 30,000. 30, now Randy has flopped second pair. He has two eights. And he is in hot water, Vince. He calls 30,000. So James going out. We've got a pop between Barry and Randy here. And right now, Randy's in the cooker. And a big ace of spades comes up on the turn. And that's kind of interesting. Barry's going to check this into right. Randy. He's trying to trap him. Now, notice Randy's made a flush draw with his pair of eights, and he bets. And he's got a four flush going can't blame, and a pair. Can't blame him for betting here No, with this hand. And Barry just calls. Doesn't raise. I'm a little surprised he doesn't raise it Not there. going crazy here. Here's the river. Four diamonds. Barry quickly checks again. He throws his opponent some rope. And Randy's going to hang himself here. He bets 120000 Little does he know he's got a guy with a real hand. Yep. Barry's going to look him up. He's going to win this pot. Notice how Barry played that hand. He knows his opponent is an aggressive player. So the reason he checked, Vince, was to give his opponent a chance to bet where he could pick up some extra money. It worked to perfection there on the river. Oh, yeah. Robin Hood of the poker world taking the dream crusher out of that hand. Mathematician, computer programmer, and high-stakes poker player Barry Greenstein wants for little in life. All this philanthropist needs is a chip, a chair, and a charity. When I got a bachelor's degree in computer science because I wanted to get custody of my uh, stepkids, and my lawyer said, I don't think you're going to get it as a professional gambler. So I said, well, I'll go out to Silicon Valley and get in with some software company and be the name of the company is Symantec, which is now one of the largest software companies. But long before math degrees, startups, and Silicon Valley, this computer whiz was already writing his own ticket. When I was in high school, I used to be the main guy just sitting in the computer room. I wrote game programs, card programs, golf programs, predecessors for the programs you see now. So what was it that turned this mild-mannered programmer into the man quickly becoming known as the Robin Hood of the poker world? When you play big poker like I do, where hundreds of thousands of dollars across the table, money becomes meaningless. But if you can take a little bit of that money off the table and give it to kids and places where it's needed, uh, now all of a sudden it has value. The main charity I give to is called Children Incorporated. And we sponsor 15,000 kids in 21 countries, and they're all really underprivileged kids. We have 2,000 unsponsored kids on our rolls. After this tournament, uh, especially if I win it, I have a feeling there will be no unsponsored kids. It's the best thing I've ever done. Well, Vince, it's a joy to watch Barry Greenstein play poker. He's got the whole package. He's got the finesse game. He knows what to bet, when to bet. Well, that was a great demonstration of poker by Barry. He makes it work. Can Kim Wa, second appearance on the World Poker Tour, looks at a 10-7 this time. He folds. Randy with a 9-3 offsuit. Now he's going to splash around here and call this. And this is splashing greatly, folks, when you're coming into pots just calling with a 9-3 offsuit. James Tipton going out. James now Barry back with an ace-5 of spades. He's just going to call. And now Chip has got two eights. He's going to come over the top of everybody. Makes it 80,000 more. Why not? He's got the octopuses. Chip Reese bumping it up. Notice Randy Jensen calling here, folks, with a 9-3 off suit. He is tramping around here. Well, he's calling this bet to try to take the pot away later. Barry throws his hand away, so here we go. Here's a flop. Flop, flop comes queen 4-4. Four, four. Chip checks, and Randy checks right behind him. We got two checks, and here's the turn. Three of hearts comes up on the turn. Randy's got a little piece of this now. He's got a three. Chip bets 40,000. He's not going to check it this time. He bet 40. Randy and Randy folds. folds. And Vince, i got to tell you, I'm totally befuddled at how Randy Jensen played that hand. If you're going to call a raise before the flop with that hand, whatever comes on the flop when your opponent checks like Chip did, you must bet it to try to win that pot. He didn't do it. Well, I guess he believed in Chip that time. Well, Vince, it's good to see Chip Reese get untracked here. You know, he's a graduate of Dartmouth. Back in the summer of 73, he was driving out west. He was going to go to Stanford Graduate School. Stopped in Las Vegas for the summer, started playing poker. Was so successful, he never made it to graduate school, became a professional poker player. And it's unlikely anybody has won more money at poker than Chip Reese. 
My kind of guy. Go to Vegas and never come home. <laughs> All right, back on James Tippin. Looks at 5-3 offsuit. He's going out. Barry Greenstein with King Deuce offsuit is going to raise advance, makes it 40,000 to go. Oh, well, he's mixing up his game here. Notice Chip calls with King Four of Spade here. Can Kim Wa going out quickly? And Randy has Queen Jack of Spade. And he's going to call. We got a nice little action pot going on. Yes, we do. 136,000 in the pot. Three way action. Here we go. The flop comes Queen Nine, Eight of Clubs. Now Barry has a King High flush draw. And Randy has hit the pair of Queens. It's going to be on him first. He also has a straight draw. I'm going to check. He checks. Check. Around to Barry, who has no pair but just a king of clubs, four to the flush. Yes, and he bets it. He bets 50,000. Chip gets out of the way. Randy calls. Randy has top pair with a straight draw. 236,000 in the pot. Going to see the turn. Here it is. Seven of hearts on the turn. Check. Randy checks. And Barry's quickly going to check behind him. Here's the river. Ooh, and the ten of clubs comes off. Barry has hit the king high flush. And notice Randy has made a straight. The crowd is moaning, Vince, because there's a four-card straight flush on the board. Oh, yeah. It's not fun for Randy right now. Meantime, Randy has made a straight. Barry has made a flush. How are they going to play it? Let's check. And he's going to check it. Barry Greenstein, the Robin Hood of poker. Looks like he's getting interested in betting here. And he's going to. He has a king high flush. And Vince, he's making a nice healthy bet here, 150000 Now, Randy's got to figure out, does he have the flush or is he bluffing me? Well, it would be a very tough call to make. Any club. Well, any club will beat him. He thinks that Barry may be roguing this pot. He's either got a flush or he has nothing. That's what Randy is thinking about here. It's a pretty hefty size bet. He's going to call it with a straight. I can't believe this call. What a good bet by Barry on the river there, that $150,000 bet. Oh, and Randy's paying this man off. The millionaire with a heart, Barry Greenstein, is going to take a nice one. And right now, Barry's become our new chip leader. With close to $1.3 million with that pot. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more from the Jack Binion World Poker Open in Tunica, Mississippi on the World Poker Tour. What really separates top pros from good poker players is when things are going bad. It's like life. It's a long road that doesn't turn. It's how you handle adversity in a poker game that matters. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour and the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Now back to the guys that go together like biscuits and gravy, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Mike, the blinds have gone up. We're talking about a ten and 20,000 blind at this point. And right now we're watching Barry Greenstein put on a performance here, Vince. It's artistry in action. He's got the precision of the Ohio State Marching Band right now. He's got close to $1.6 million. We're down to five players, and right now it's going to be back on Chip Reese. Looks at a king queen offsuit. He's going to raise it. Comes in for 50,000. Can Kim Wa with the 7 4 diamonds? Not going to call. Randy Jensen folds this 9 3. Around James Tipp, and he's got a 9 8 of clubs. And he's going to call. Barry throws his hand away, so here we go. The two Buckeyes going at it again. Flop is Jack 9 5. And James has hit his pair of nines, but he checks into Chip. Now notice Chip has an inside straight draw. He opts to bet here. Comes in for 50000 I raise. Look at this. James Tippin is going to raise him. Oh, the so-called amateur check raising here. He raises at 50000 Raising the guy many consider the best poker player in the world, folks. An amazing play by James Tippin right here. And right now Chip is saying, why did I bet this straight draw? Why didn't I check? 
I can't believe this guy keeps check raising me. He's supposed to be an amateur. Right back in Chip's face. But I just can't believe the boldness of James Tippin to check raise the legendary Chip Reese with second pair. Well, it's going to work. The car wash man. You know what? You can call him amateur all you want. This man is no amateur. You're right about that, Vince. What a bold re-raise by James right there. All you can do is tip your hat to the guy known as Tip. Well, that's the great thing about the World Poker Tour is that anyone can join us. Come out, take a stab, and you too can push around superstar players like Chip Reese. <laughs> you can try to, anyway. Well, let's see if Chip can recuperate. He throws away King Deuce this time. Yeah, I'm trying to catch his breath here. Can Kim Wa going out as well? Here's Randy Jensen on the button. Means something. King Ten of Spade, pretty good hand. Raises it to 50,000. In seat number one, James Tippin, showing his stuff now. He's got ace eight off suit. I call. He's going to call the 50,000. He's going to stay involved. Now it's on Barry. Barry has a 9 3 off suit. Not a very good starting hand, of course, but he's got a little money in there. What's he going to do? I'll tell you what he's doing, Vince. He is raising the pot 400,000 right here. Oh, an absolutely zipping pip. Well, he has sensed weakness a little bit on his opponents. He saw James didn't re-raise. He's going to try to pick this pot up with a nice re-raise. I'm going to beat those kids up that you... <laughs> Randy's got an interesting hand. He's got king, ten of spades, but can you make this kind of call right now? That's him. No, he's going to lay it down. One down. I surrender. And James lays his hand down, and folks, there you see it. You don't have to have cards to win at No Limit Hold'em. You just got to sense when your opponents are not real strong and fire at the pot. Vince, you're watching Poetry in Motion here right now by Barry Greenstein. Now, Mike, on the World Poker Tour, we are always yapping about position. You know, early position, late position, he's in position. Now, for some of the folks out there that are saying, what the heck are they talking about? Let's explain how important position really is in poker. Well, Vince, it could very well be the most important concept to understand, especially in tournament poker. You know, in real estate, we talk about location, location, location. In poker, it's position, position, position. Our own Shauna Hyatt took a look at this topic in this week's Poker Corner, brought to you by Anheuser World Select. Whether you're a novice or a pro, cash game or tournament vet, understanding the basic principle of position at the table is the key to landing in the money or out of luck. I think position is everything. I think being behind somebody is ultra powerful. Position in knowing it all is a very big factor because obviously most times you're running without the ball. And knowing your position in each hand has everything to do with this little white disc. The button, which moves clockwise around the table, acts as the dealer in the hand. So if I'm on the button, that means I'm in position or last to act, which is a pretty good place to be. So to be in position is to have your opponent before you. But whatever he does, you get information, and then you make your decision. If they're not a big bluffer or someone that bets a lot, usually they check. So all you have to do is just bet and win. Yes. Sounds simple enough, but not everyone will act the same way in the same position. So what types of players do I want then on my left and right? I want the squeezers on the left and the maniacs on the right. There's a lot of guys that just wait for aces. You know they're only putting their money in with premium hands. Nice hand. I want that guy on my left. There's like a thousand ways to skin a cat, or maybe a hundred. I don't know how many ways there are to skin a cat, but there's a lot. Or make a grilled cheese sandwich. You if know, you're a tight player, then it doesn't really matter, because you can just check into the crazy. Shut up. But if you're an aggressive player, and you bet a lot, you want to be behind the crazy. So basically what I've learned is if I'm at the table, I've got a Gus Hansen on my left, a Dewey Tomko on my right. If I don't play my cards right, then I may be in position to kiss my chips goodbye. Right now it's going to be on Ken Kim Wa. First one to be in play here. He's got an eight deuce off suit. He folds. Oh, has not been able to pick up too many good hands lately. Randy going out with queen three. Jim Tippin going out. Back to Barry. Well, here's Robin Hood again, raising with a king deuce off suit. Another Bet 60,000. 60, and Chip's going to look him up here. Well, Chip's got 10-9 off suit, and he is going to stay involved here. Here's the flop. Flop is ace-nine-seven. Barry doesn't hit his hand. 
Well, the action's on, Barry. Remember, he raised before the flop. We know Chip has got a little piece of this, but Barry's going to bet it. He bets 90000 Chip's got a pair of nines here. Well, he's only got second pair here. I'm all in. Look at this. He's all not going to take it. Barry quickly fold, but what a bold all-in play by Chip Reese there. He sensed something was up. He smelled something was fishy by Barry. He sees Robin Hood just robbing everybody here. He decided to draw a sword in the sand, move all in with the two nines, and Barry lays his hand down. That's the reason why this man has been able to survive in Vegas for 20 years. Those kind of plays, just amazing. We're going to go to a break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from Tunica, Mississippi, on the World Poker Tour. with so play online at partypoker.com it's fun it's easy it's the world's largest poker room you fold it welcome back to the world poker tour in tunica on the mighty mississippi so far, poker professional and Elvis fan Tony Hartman was the first to drown, going all in with a suspicious mind against dream crusher Randy Jensen. Robin Hood Barry Greenstein continues to be a man on a mission, slinging arrows at both Randy and Chip Reese to stay in the lead. But the poker legend and the tournament pro have another player to contend with, retired car wash owner James Tippin, who's attempting to give them both a professional cleaning. In the meantime, Ken Kim Wa, on his second WPT final table, is trying to keep his head above water and his chips on the table. With three and a half million on the line, the tide is rising in this duel on the Delta. And folks are getting a chance today to see two of the most successful poker players in the last 10 years and over the last 30 years in Barry Greenstein and Chip Reese. It is fun to get to watch these high stakes players Play on a final table here on the World Poker Tour. Right now it's going to be back on Chip Reese, who looks at a 10-7 offsuit. He folds. Ken Kimwa has a jack three, Mike. Here comes Randy Jensen. Queen six of hearts on the button. 40. Makes it 40,000 to go. Tip and go on out. Barry with 22. He's going to make this call. Yep, he's got the two ducks. He calls it. Here comes a flop. 10 5 3. Barry quickly checks. And Randy's going to bet with Zip and Pip. He bets 30,000. With just the queen high. And look at this. Barry re raising him 100,000 with two deuces here. Oh, you got to love this raise. Raise. But look at over the top, Randy. He is re-raising here with absolutely nothing. 200 more. Or whatever that is. He gets Barry to lay this hand down. Oh, man. The bluff on the bluff. The re-raise after the raise. He wins this pot. He takes it away from Barry there with a very bold re-raise. Absolute intimidation. Great play by the Dream Crusher. Well, Vince, I'll tell you what's so great about that play is earlier tonight, Randy had nearly a million dollars in chips. Now he's got a half a million dollars in chips, and he jeopardized at least half of his chips there on a stone bluff of a re-raise of a re-raise. Amazing play by Randy Jensen there to win that pot against Barry Greenstein. Well, the Dream Crusher definitely knows what he's doing. Crushes a lot of dreams, obviously, at the poker field. Poker professional Randy Jensen doesn't just play a big game, he also likes to talk one. <laughs> Only bluff of the day, no more. <laughs> Randy, he'll be the one who's doing a lot of talking at the table. 
Is it worse than mine? Call if it's better than mine. Call. At the poker table, I'm kind of a big mouth, and at times I get on people's nerves. I'm sure, drive them crazy. <laughs> and when that happens, it gets everybody focused on what they think is a little war going on, and they forget that there's eight other players at the poker table, and lo and behold, then they end up giving me their chips. So it's kind of a nice little talent to have. <laughs> With a history of aggressive play and table antics, Randy definitely has a reputation that precedes him. Randy is a player that you have to be very careful with. Randy's a chip mover, and when he's on his game, he calls it in the zone. Big bets do not scare him. I'm an action type player who can be equally bad or equally good in tournaments or live games. I'm kind of real up or down, it depends. I always used to just want to bust everybody. It's like, screw the money, who cares? I just want to play, I just want to play, I just want to play. Now, I just want to win. He is an action man at the table, Vince. A talkative, trash talker, third best day of my fun life. guy to play with. Action continues right back on Ken Kimwa. <laughs> Two kids in the day. Well, he looks down at ace-10. This is the fourth best day. And on the short stack. This time he finally got an interesting hand. Well, he's got about 230,000 left here. Big blind's only 20,000. Come on, he's all in Vince. yeah he's gonna take a stab he's putting the whole 200 and some thousand in the pot can i get a count please and randy says how much is it can kim was so far has been very solid very tight is randy going to respect this 200 it's 200 I call. He is calling him, Vince. He is going to call it. This is an amazing call. Very solid. It's back to James now. He folds. Barry's out. Chip folds. They all fold like dominoes. And here we go. It's two tens versus ace ten. Randy's going to like this when he sees this hand. What a nice call I made there, he says. Let's fade this, baby. Now, can his hand hold up and will he win the pot? Can Kim Waugh finish fifth in L.A.? Will fate be different now? Can can do it. No, not so far. It's eight six deuce, no help. Can is going to have to have an ace to stay alive in this tournament, folks. Randy's tens in front at this point. Randy nodding his head, knows he's a big favorite at this stage to take this pot. Here's the turn. It's a jack of diamonds. It's, it's not going to help. Can over a half a million dollars in the pot. If Can doesn't catch an ace, he's out of here in fifth place. Here's the river. He doesn't do it, Vince. No, he doesn't. The seven. Well, Randy shakes his hand. Well, again, Can finishes fifth on the World Poker Tour, but this time, Vince, he takes home over $155,000 for his efforts. He's going to walk away and go to the Players' Lounge to meet up with the big house. Observation is the best thing. Write down a, a couple key hands and what people did, what your opponents did. When you're not in the hand, see what the other people are doing when they are in the hand. That's the best thing you can learn in any kind of poker game. Welcome back to the Jack Binion World Poker Open. This week's stop on the World Poker Tour. With Mike Randy Jensen is eliminated Cam Kimwa. We are down to four here at the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Yes, we are. You know, it's pretty amazing, Mike, to be nicknamed the Dream Crusher. I mean, it, it's very, very ominous at a poker table, but imagine his wife, how she feels about that. I mean, I'm married to the Dream Crusher. Oh, I can't wait for the rest of my life. Now, he likes that name because he does want to crush everyone's dreams at the final table. Started with 367. We are down to four. They're going to open up the game is just a little bit more. Well, here we go. Actions on Chip Reese. Picks up a nice hand, four-handed, an ace-queen. Comes in for 60,000. Oh. Right into Randy Jensen, who has a king eight of diamonds. He's going to call it. Well, he's been on a roll. He's over a million in chips now. James quickly went out. Barry going out. Those could be for all the chips right now. Here's a flop. A flop of seven, six, four. On. On. I'll check. And they both check. Now the deuce of diamonds comes off. Chip checks again. And that gives four diamonds to Randy. 65. Dream Crusher going to bet this. Randy's got a flush draw and a straight draw. He's making what we call a semi-bluff here. He doesn't have the best hand, but he has a lot of cards he can win the pot with. 
Well, Chip is calling him with the ace high. He thinks the ace high is good. Indeed, it is good right now. Good poker feel by Chip Reese. Last card coming up. Eight of hearts. So Randy Jensen has made two eights here. I'll check. Chip checks and Randy checks. And Chip's not going to like this river card because he's going to see he got beat at the river. Now that was a great feel by Chip. And unfortunately, Randy got a little piece of that with the eights. Going to take that pot. Very disappointing to Chip Reese. Well, Randy actually made a good bet on 4th Street. Chip made a call thinking he had the best hand. In fact, he did have. But Randy got lucky, hit his card on the river, and picks up another pot. Uh, Action's back on girl. James Tippin, playing superbly here tonight. He's the dealer. Can't be me. <laughs> he looks down at a nice hand here, Vince. Ace, queen. Picked up a whopper. Best hand I've had since I uh, sat down. I'm just going to call He's honest to boot, and he's just going to call Look it. Look at that. It says it's the best hand I've had. I'm just going to call here. And Barry has an ace nine right behind him. The question is, will Barry believe that speech? Doesn't look like it. He's going to raise it, Vance. Makes it 120,000 to go. And Chip goes out. Randy throwing away a king seven. Two-way action. I'm all in. He says, I'm all in. James Tippin has oh. come back over the top. And Barry has learned his lesson. He was telling the Very truth, cool. Barry. Yes, he was. He just schooled Barry Greenstein right then. <laughs> he told him it was the best hand he had. <laughs> he came back over the top for all his chips. I bet Barry believes him next time. The armor all is out. James Tippin, car wash man, six seating. James Tippin may have recently retired, but this WPT finalist is just hitting his prime. I was in the car wash business for 45 years, and now I'm looking for something else to do, preferably getting into the pizza business. Well, I graduated in 1955, enlisted into the Army. After my discharge, I met my wife, and I wouldn't change it for the world. She's been a real sweetheart. After many successful years in business and marriage, James began planning his retirement. We had decided to buy a home in Vegas. This is when I started to play poker. Since then, I've been playing tournaments on a smaller scale. I told my wife that I would like to come down to Tunica and see if I couldn't be lucky enough to win an entry into this event. Lo and behold, I was lucky enough to win a seat into this final tournament. I'm ecstatic. I, I mean, this is, I suppose, every poker player's dream, but I've done it, and I'm here. If I could win this tournament, I'm sure that I'll be on my way to the pizza business. Four players, Mike. You think fatigue has any factor here after four days? Well, I don't really think so, Vince. They're playing for way over a million dollars in cash, a WPT title. You're juiced up. I don't think you're going to go to sleep here. Barry goes out. Chip's going out. Dream Crusher looks at a hand. This time it's Jack Nine off suit, but he's going to raise. This is the Battle of the Blinds. I hate it when the small blind keeps picking on the big blind. And you've been doing it to me hand after hand after hand after hand. This time I'm going to come to Papa, as they say. Just be careful on your next bet. Taking the stand. Let's play a pot, babe. He said, I'm going to call you this time. He feels like he's been picked on, and he's right. He is being picked on here. Any bounties on him right now? Big bounties. Wow, flop is 9-6-4. Now, Randy has flopped the top pair. But it's four to the flush for James Tippin. And a pair, Vince. He's got a pair and a flush draw. I'll check it. Randy checks. You didn't get in this game checking. He's checked the top pair, Vince. Notice this play. One hundred thousand. But James bets a hundred thousand. Three hundred. Randy re-raises with the top pair here, three hundred thousand. And a strong play of check and raise. I'm all in. And look at this. James says I'm all in here. He quickly goes over the top of Randy. Uh, how much? Okay, six hundred thousand. Oh, he's mad as hell. He doesn't want to take it anymore. Looks like six ten six. Wow. He's saying this is the time to gamble. I got to call 112 more. 412 more. That's what it is. Send me home. I've still had a great time. <laughs> Send me home. The old reverse psychology. 
testing Randy, toying with him. Boy, I tell you, I think this is a tough call for Randy to make here. He has two nines with just a jack kicker. So whatever happens with this pot, give James Tippin credit. He's not backing down. He's not wilting under the bright lights. I'm telling you, he is playing very, very good poker today. Uh, if he does get called in and happens to lose us, he would be our fourth place finisher. James has a lot of outs, as we say, to win this pot. He can catch a six, a king, or a club to win this pot. Dream Crusher's wife in the audience standing up, obviously nervous. Now, if he does get called in and happens to lose us, he would be our fourth place finisher. He opts to fold. No good. And James Tippin wins a monster pot here. James is not going to show his hand. He's going to keep him guessing. He clapped for himself. Look at this. Now the semi bluff pays off, pushes him around. Let's notice the old retiree's got some pep in his step here today. When you're picking up pots off these great players, you got to love it, Vince. This is fantastic for poker to see an amateur player playing this well against these great poker players. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from Mississippi on the World Poker Tour. Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton, and you're joining us in Mississippi in the land of Mark Twain, River Boats, and the Jack Binion World Poker Open. What a contest this is shaping up to be. This is anyone's game. James Tippin crosses the million-dollar mark here, so he and Barry and Randy all now have a little over a million dollars. Chip Reese, on the other hand, is on the short stack, Vance, with about 360000 I pumped him up to eight hundred yesterday. I had to pump him up to eight hundred tonight. <laughs> Look at this. I'm thinking about adopting you. That's been about the fifth man. <laughs> you should have been gone long ago. Dream Crusher getting a little angry there. And he's going to go out with 5 3. Gone long ago. James Tippin on the button with 6 3. The button once again, the most favorable position in Hold'em. He's going out. He throws it away. <laughs> Barry trying to take advantage of his chip lead over Chip. Raises the pot with an 8 4 offsuit. Well, Chip's in position. He calls him with a jack nine, trying to make something happen here. So here comes a flop. flop. Flop comes king, 7-3, no help to either player. But it's on Robin Hood. Yeah. Well, Barry raised before the flop. It looks like he's going for his holster here, Vance. And yes, he fires at the pot, 90,000. I'd like to fight, but I can't do it. Bangs away, and he's going to get Chip Reese to go out. So it just shows you how aggression plays a no-limit hold'em. He earns that pot by being aggressive and taking advantage of the short stack. So the Robin Hood of poker, Barry Greenstein, very impressive move there. i got to tell you, Vince, the Horseshoe Casino and the Gold Strike Resort Casino have done a spectacular job in putting this tournament on all week. Absolutely. Now, Shauna Hyatt spent time in both of these wonderful casinos, as well as with the legendary man behind the World Poker Open itself, Jack Binion. How do you get a world-famous poker event named after you? Well, it definitely doesn't hurt if your last name is Binion. Binion. The name is synonymous with tournament poker itself. And legendary showman Benny Binion was the man behind it all. Benny was really the last of the great casino owners, maybe the only one. He just said, give people a fair gamble of some good food. And that's the way that the whole Binion line was successful. Benny was your friend. And you were a good guy, Benny would give you the shirt off his back. And Jack's the same way. And Jack Binion has not only continued in his father's footsteps, but has also helped create an environment where world-class tournaments could go mainstream, with the WPT right at the center of it all. TV shows that poker is fun. 
people are seeking this out because it's a great game. And as you can see from the tournament, it's a great spectator sport. I just think the world of Jeff Bingham. He's got a wonderful setup here, and along with the employees of Gold Strike, I just commend them. Today, right here on the fabled Mississippi River, Jack Binion's Horseshoe Casino with the Gold Strike Casino Resort proudly hosts the biggest tournament in WPT history, an event that would definitely make Benny proud. That's what a great man. And I'll tell you something, this is a great tournament. When we started with 367, they all had to put up $10,000 each. We are down to four. Action is on Chip Reese. Chip takes a look at a king five of spades this time. I'm all in. Look at this, he's going all in with advance. Oh, he's sending in the heat. And he goes out with a 9-6, but right behind him, look at this, James Tippin's got a pair of ladies, divas, Hilton sisters, whatever you want to call them. I call. He just calls 281,000. Yeah, this could knock out Chip Reese. Yep, Chip doesn't like to hear that. I didn't say all in. I called his. Barry Greenstein has picked up Ace King of Diamonds in the big blind. I'm all in. He's going all in, Vince. Oh, James Tippin gets out of his chair. He's a sick puppy right now. He's just been raised a million dollars. Wow. Now let's explain to the audience. Chip Reese is already all in. He's put in all his chips. Now, anything on the side, Barry has extra money, as does James. Anything on the side will become a side pot between Barry and James Tippin. And, folks, that's going to be close to a $2 million side pot just in case James decides to call here with the two queens. Wow. And right now, Chip, who moved in, was hoping nobody called. And right now, one guy's called and another guy's moved in on him. But right now, James Tippin is in the cooker. He's got to call a $970,000 raise here. This is a massive fairy tale pot happening. We've taken 281000 from each player and put it in the middle. Well, Mike, all the money is on the line. He's moved all in. We'll see what he does when we come back from the Jack Binion World Poker Open on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour at the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Right now, a three-way battle is brewing, and James Tippin has an all-in decision to make. Can the retired car wash owner stay dry, or will he sink with a legend on the mighty miss? Folks, James Tippin is faced with a monster decision right here, right now, and it's for all his money. Because of the WPT cam, we see he has the best hand with two queens. But believe me, it's going to cost him another million to call. I have a question. If I go all in and we both lose to him. The tournament director is explaining to them whoever starts the pot with the most chips gets the higher finishing position. And that's worth $128,000 in real money. Well, he's just thinking that potentially if he happens to call this and lose, if both of them should lose chip and him. Who would come in third and who would come in fourth? There's a big difference in money there. And the fourth place finish is 207000 Third place is worth 328000 What a decision James Tippin is faced with here. Folks, this is for all the marbles virtually. I call. Yes! He calls. He's, gonna He's call. done it. Randy Jensen pounds his fist on the table. He is thrilled about this. Somebody's going to be hurt after this pot. We're going to have a showdown. Three players. Well, we have a race situation, but remember, Chip Reese has a king. That kills one of Barry's cards. So James Tippin is the favorite to knock out two of the most successful, if not the most successful players in poker history, Vince. Wow. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for this amateur player from Dayton, Ohio. He's taking his shot, Vince. He's going for the gusto right here. This could be the whole ball of wax. This is a very strong call. Well, the crowd is stunned, and I'll tell you who's jumping for joy is Randy Jensen right now. He knows if Barry knocks out both of these guys, he jumps up 450000 in real money and has a chance to play for this title heads up. And Chip Reese is just cursing the world right now. You know, he tried to make a strong play. He did make a good play, but sometimes you make the right play at the wrong time. It looks like that right now. Well, right now, of the three players... Certainly, James Tippin is the favorite to win this pot. So here we go. They turn up the cards. Now, folks, we have what we call a race situation. They're flipping a coin for a $2.8 million pot. Literally a million dollars difference in money. 
James Tippett getting up from the table, looking pleased with himself. He knows he's the slight favorite here against Robin Hood and against superstar player Chip Reese. Well, the crowd's going crazy. Everybody's holding their breath. What is going to happen? Here comes the flop. Ace, ace, please. Yeah. Oh, bingo, oh. bingo. Ace King comes up for Barry. Barry Greenstein's hit two pair right on the flop, aces and kings. Now what this means is James is going to have to catch a queen or a running jack and a ten to win this pot. Chip is going to have to catch two running fives to win it. What a horrific flop for Tippin. Here we go with a turn. It's an eight of diamonds. No help for James or Chip, of course. Well, Chip is going to be eliminated. He's going to be our fourth place finisher for yes, sure. Yes, he is, but there's one card to go. Can he pull off a queen here? Queen, baby. Come on, queen. James has to catch a queen. Otherwise, he's going to be our third place finisher. Here comes the last card, the river card, the cash card. What's it going to be? It's an ace. Yeah! Barry Greenstein has made aces full of kings to knock two players out at the same time. The first time in history on the World Poker Tour that's happened with four players left. Huh? Well, what am I supposed to do? You can't do anything about it. Unbelievable. James Tippin, Chip Reese, both having to say goodbye. Tremendous efforts. Chip Reese will pick up 207,000 for fourth place. James Tippin, the amateur so-called player, will pick up 328,000. And that only means one thing. We are down to heads-up action with two left here at Tunica. The custom on the World Poker Tour is the money presentation. And Vince, here come the riverboat people in with the cash. Oh, this is great. Right out of showboat. Everyone dressed up, decked out, bringing in the big cash. Biggest prize pool yet on the World Poker Tour, close to 3.5 million on the green felt right now. And it all fits in those two black bags, Vince. Two lovely ladies, and they methodically put the money out. The dream crusher, Randy Jensen, foaming at the bit here. Let's send him off with a round of applause. He vaulted up 450,000 by Barry knocking those two players out. And he's got a chance to pick up another 650,000. And we are getting ready for the two-man show the macho match, we're about ready to go. The price of poker's going up now. Antes are now 3,000, blinds are 15 and 30,000. Playing heads up, the big blind is in front of the button, the small blind's on the button, and the button acts first before the flop and after on every round of betting thereafter. So right now it's gonna be on Robin Hood of poker, Barry. He's got a silly little 10-7. But he's going to raise this. Yes, he does. Makes it 100,000 to go. Randy Jensen with a solid king-queen. He's going to call it. Yep, he just calls it. Battle of wits going on here. Heads up action. Here's a flop. The flop is ace-king five. King of clubs, five of hearts. Well, that doesn't help Barry, but Randy has a little piece that he has the kings. 90. He bets 90,000. Right into Robin Hood. Well, you can see what Barry's thinking right here. I raised before the flop. Why would this guy come out and bet on the flop when it come ace-king five? Just doesn't make sense. It's puzzling to Barry. He's trying to figure out, why would the guy lead into me? If he had that, why wouldn't he check? Let me bet and then take the pot away from me. So Barry, a little puzzled as to why Randy would lead out and bet on this flop. In the meantime, Barry doesn't have much. We know that because of the WPT cam. He just has 10-7 offsuit. You're right. He's got absolutely nothing. Five hundred. Look at this. He's going to raise it. All in. Without blinking, Randy Jensen says all in. Oh, Randy is just stuck at the Barry. Wow. What a bold play with second pair, though, Vance. Randy pumps his fist. What a great read he put on Barry right there. Randy read him perfectly. He called him down. He pushed him around. He sent our Robin Hood back to Sherwood Forest wincing. <laughs> You're right, Fence. Barry may be Robin Hood, but on that hand, Randy was the sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> You're right about that. He is pecking his way back here. Folks, Barry Greenstein, one of the greatest poker players in the world. It's a treat to watch him work, but Randy Jensen will be no pushover. And he looks at Queen Jack this time. 50. Oh, 60. I'm sorry. I didn't even realize where we were at. He raises it, comes in for 60,000. 
Now notice Barry with an ace seven of clubs doesn't re-raise it. He doesn't want his opponent to think he has an ace in case an ace flops up there. Well, flop comes Jack seven five. It's a solid flop for Randy. Barry checks. Barry checks. Now Randy's flop top pair and Barry has flopped second pair. One forty. A hundred and forty thousand, Randy bets. He's not fooling around with him here. Barry with a pair of sevens. Barry headed for Whitewater here. He calls the 140,000. With second pair, his opponent has top pair. This pot building up beautifully for Randy. Here we go with Fourth Street. Now a 10 comes off. Fourth card is the Barry checks card. again. Barry checks. 200,000. Randy. Randy bets 200,000. And look how quickly Barry throws his hand away this time. Oh, he's had enough. Yes, what he did is he tested him. He wanted to see if he'd fire another shell at it. When he did, he suspected Randy had a better hand. A good laydown by Barry Greenstein there, and a very nice bet by Randy Jensen there. Mike and Vince, what's the Vince, we are watching poker artistry right here between these two guys. This is how you play heads-up poker. One mistake. It could be all over. Barry looks at his hand. This time he's got a suited connector, a 6-5 of spades. And he comes in for 100000 Pushes it right into Randy. Randy looks at a 5-4. It's also a suited connector. Very interesting. It's what we call implied odds here. It cost him 70000 more to call, but he could theoretically win another million dollars or more on this hand, so he does call it. So here we go. He's potentially one hand away from elimination. Here we go. King 4-deuce is the flop. Look at that. Randy's got a piece of it. He's got the 4s. I'll check. Randy checks. But you got the inside straight draw with Barry. Barry's going to bet it strong. Yeah, he bets 160000 Now, Randy has second pair. In fact, he has the best hand right now with two fours. How is he going to play this? Does he want to get involved with this hand? It's 160000 to him. Call. Yes, he's going to call it. And there's a king out on that board. Very scary, but he's calling this down. So off we go to the turn. Over half a million dollars in the pot right now. Oh, a three comes off. Oh, bingo for Barry. He has hit this straight. Who's first to act? Uh, 400,000. Now Randy has two fours and an open end straight draw, and he bets 400,000. Oh, Robin Hood right now is dancing with Little John. So excited. Hit the straight. Come on, in. All in, he says. You got to protect yourself in case Randy has a club. Correct. And can suck out on him. You don't want him drawing out of flush for nothing, so you must raise here. And Barry's opted to move all in on him. He's going to force him to the test right here. You almost got to think it's going to be bye bye here for Randy because how could you possibly call this with what's out there? And he's got a pair of fours and an open end straight draw, but there's three clubs on the board. In his mind, he could be drawn completely dead, which in fact he is. He's drawn dead to a tie. I'm afraid you're going to get the one club on me again. <laughs> now he says, I'm afraid you're going to get the club. Well, Barry's glad to hear that. That means he knows his opponent doesn't have a club. Now, this is just Hollywood in here, folks. I don't think he has any intention of calling this bet. Yeah, this could be the old fluff and puff show. He just wants to make Barry suffer some. I'll let you outplay me. He yes, throws he his hand away. And Barry picks up the pot. Well, that was an interesting hand. Barry bet the flop with the gut shot straight draw. Had Randy re-raised on the flop, he would have picked that pot up right there, Vince. Instead, he ended up going off for another 560000 by just calling the bet on the flop. And so that is going to put Barry Greenstein way out in front. But stay tuned. This match is not over. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. We play for big pots, small stakes, and the chance to say, read them and weep. For the weekends, the all-nighters, and the lunch hour, we play for the legends and for the unknowns who dream of winning it all. 
for the bad beats. In the Pocket Kings, we sometimes have the sense to fold. We play at FullTillPoker.com. Welcome back. We are down to heads-up action here on the World Poker Tour. Man-to-man, ego-to-ego at the Jack Binion World Poker Open. Well, Vince, with that pot, we're right back to square one, just as they started when they played heads up. Barry now has 2.6 million again, and Randy has a little bit over a million. Blind still 15 and 30, and it's going to be on Randy to make a decision first. This time he looks at Dolly Parton, 9 to 5 of spades. And he's just going to call. He has Jack Six off suit. He checks, and Barry says, okay, give us a flop. Flop is queen 3-3 three, three with two spades. Gives Randy a flush draw. And Randy quickly is going to make a bet. Quickly bets 40000 40, Look at this. Barry calling with a jack six off suit here, folks. Fourth Street comes up. Now a seven comes off. No help to either player. Barry checks. Without hesitation, Randy fires 80000 at the pot. Well, at the semi-bluff. He's got four to the flush. Now remember, Barry just has a jack six off suit here. It's a theft alarm, so don't try something. He's going to raise advance, makes it 200,000. This is incredible instincts by Barry. Now he's caught Randy with his hand in the cookie jar. Remember, Randy just has a nine and a five. But he's got four spades. I call. So he calls 120,000 more. He's going to try to make that flush. And he'd love to catch us on the river. And off we go to the river. Now six comes off. That's now this right. gives Barry two sixes and the best hand. He checks. Now, the only way Randy can win this pot is to bluff at it and to bet. Will he do it? Will he fire a shell into this pot? Did not catch his flush, but look at him. He's lining up. His opponent has check raised him. You can't get a read on this guy for nothing. <sighs> now he's going to reconsider here. Well, he is up against a master. But he can be a little crafty himself. I can only bet 200. I can only bet 200. What kind of table talk is that? I can only bet 200,000. With Zip and Pip, he makes his bet. <laughs> but a lot of hearty showing here. Oh. Of course, it is the only way he can win the pot. Oh, but the table talk, beautiful. Well, there's 546,000 sitting out there. He bets 200,000. And now Barry's hit his pair of sixes on the end. He's going to throw it down. He lays it down. And look at this. Randy sticks the needle in him, shows him the bluff. I show a nine high. A nine high. Oh, he pinches his arm with that one. He showed oh. nine high. He's bragging about the bluff. And the whole world sees it now, Randy. The dream crusher succeeds there. Well, I can tell you one thing. I believe it's a mistake showing Barry Greenstein anything. You're talking about the most successful poker player in the world, and you're giving him information you don't have to give him there. And if you're going to try to rattle him and get him on tilt, that's not going to work either, Vince. So there's no purpose in showing the cards there, in my opinion, other than to show the crowd that you're bluffing. Got to get some big pots going. Come on, Barry, show some guts and put some big pots together. And now look at this. Right now, Randy Jensen's taunting Barry. Oh, it's to me. My chance to show guts, 200. He's going to bet 200,000 here, Vince. Hey, don't show guts and say all in, though. That uh, all in. Oh, you... All in. I almost had you. Said if you get the guts to say all in right now, Barry says, okay, all in. But Barry's got ace queen, and he's gone all in. You want it, you got it. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> well. Oh, talk about foot and mouth. He has been foiled. The chirping <laughs> backfires. Randy just shakes his head. I don't think his chatter is going to work at all on Barry Greenstein. He better come up with plan B. <sighs> You know, we might have seen a little poker karma right there. The poker gods don't like too much cockiness. <laughs> well, I know one thing. All that chip chatter that he's trying to do against Barry is going to be useless. I don't believe there's anything you can say at the poker table that's going to rattle him. Well, the action's on Barry this time. And look, Vince, he picks up another nice heads-up hand. Ace, eight, a spade. That is a legitimate strong hand. And he raised it, makes it 150000 to go. And Dream Crusher has a measly Motown, a jack and a five, jacks and fives. Or what the heck? Calling out of position with this hand. You can see frustration setting him. He's getting desperate here. And here comes a flop. 
Flop comes queen seven three. I'm all in. I'm all in. He's all in. He called that bet just so he can move all in on the flop no matter what came up there. Oh, it's a tremendous play by Randy. It really is. Give him credit, Vance. That takes a lot of heart. Now, you're talking about if he's wrong here, he's going to be finished in second place. It's over. That's a $650,000 real money move, an all-in bluff with nothing right there. Give the guy credit, Vance. Shows a lot of heart. That is a tremendous play by the dream crusher, Randy Jensen. He is coming back in this thing. Now, Randy has a 7 200 and he raises it. But look at this. Right behind him, Robin Hood has a pair of kings. Big, big hand for Barry right here. And he goes all in with the two kings. Now remember the last time this same scenario happened. Randy had ace-five offsuit. Barry had king-queen. Randy laid it down. Oh, that is a body blow to the dream crusher. What's he going to do this time? You see the pressure he's faced. And you've pulled both 200s in already? Oh, he feels manipulated, violated, slapped across the face. Keep doing this. Believe me, he's got a terrible decision to make here. It's a little over $2.1 million raise. This time he'll be up against it if he calls. <sighs> he's going to throw it away. He makes the right decision, yes, Vince. Yes, he does. Wise move. Well, Vince, as good as Barry is playing, i got to tell you, he is holding over Randy right now. His cards have been better. Virtually all the time they played heads up here. When it's going to take home close to 1.3 million. Who will get lucky? What a great heads up competition here. It is Robin Hood versus the Dream Crusher. First time at the final table for both players. And right now it's going to be on Randy. One card. I'm only going to look at one. I raise. I'm only going to look at one card and raise it, he says. He's chirp talking. <laughs> That's the way. It's the only way I can win against you. I looked at one card, honest to God. 60,000 is the bet. You can't bet. So you said you're raising. I did. What the hell are we playing? Oh. So I got to make it 100. Put 40 more out there. 100,000. He's got to bet 100,000 if he's raising it. He hasn't put enough out there. He said raise, so they're going to make him put in at least 100,000. People at home see him. Barry's not going for it. He's calling with Queen 10 off suit. We're going to see a flop. Best part. Come so on. here comes the flop. Flop is 10 4 3. Oh, possible disaster here. Barry's got a pair of 10s with a queen kicker and he's checked it. I'm not going to give you a chance to outplay me. I'm all in. Randy says, I'm all in. Yes, he has with a pair of fours. I call. Barry calls. Barry says, I call. Just that quick. There's no hesitation. Randy nods his head. He knows he's in trouble here. Oh, well, Barry has dug the hole. He has put the branches and the twigs over it, waiting for his sucker to fall in, and it is Randy. Good hand. You got a pair of teams? Yeah. It's top pair versus second pair, but it's not over yet. No, it's not. Four. Four. Randy can catch a four or seven to take the lead. Come on, four. Lucky four. Or he can catch a five and six to make a straight. And there's fourth straight. It's a nine of clubs. That means Randy's got to catch a four or seven. Seven or four, babe. Or he will be our runner-up. Barry Greenstein will be our champion. Barry looks back at his girlfriend. He blows her a kiss. He knows he's in great position to take this title. Can he dodge a four or a seven? He is one card away from becoming a new World Poker Tour millionaire. Can he do it? Randy's going to need a four or seven to stay alive. It's coming. Levitate it to the top. Here it is. No, Randy doesn't do it. Barry's taking this title. Barry Charity Greenstein is our champion. And Vince, what a great story this is for the World Poker Tour and poker in general. A guy playing who's going to donate 100% of his money to charity. What a great thing. And there he goes into the stands just like Rocky to embrace his lovely girlfriend. And for his efforts, he's going to pick up close to $1.3 million. And in second place, fabulously played, Randy Jensen is going to pick up $656,000. What an event. Now, as a custom on the World Poker Tour, we're going to have a toast to our winners. 
with Anheuser World Select, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. To our runner-up, Randy Jensen, and to the Jack Binion World Poker Open Champion, Barry Charity Greenstein, here's to you. For Shauna Hyatt and Vince Van Patten, I'm Mike Sexton, saying thanks for watching the World Poker Tour. Until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. Woo! Here we go, here we go, Mike. Here, try some of this. Bang, bang. Oh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. The real beauty of the World Poker Tour. You play until you go broke. All in. He says I'm all in. Well, you're right, well, you're right, Mike. Well, you're right, well, you're right, Mike. Whoa, he's all in. Can you believe this? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Oh. Gone. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Bang. Gone. Well, you're right, Mike. That's got to spin. Absolutely. He's all in. All in. Yeah, you gotta love that. Gotta love, gotta love, gotta love that. Well, he says you may have wrote the book and you may be the godfather, but here's sure. some of this. Bang. Oh. Oh, yeah, you gotta love that. Show tunes going off in your head. Going off in your head. Gotta love that. Whoa. We look forward to seeing you next season on the World Poker Tour. Oh, no, I wasn't ready.